The success of present-day agriculture has resulted from the improvement of livestock, the continuous development of better methods of handling crops, and building and conserving the fertility of our soil. Much of the progress has been made possible by new developments in harvesting machinery. Machines that do the work better or reduce the number of men needed to harvest the crop. Now, farming is made easier and more profitable with one man harvesting. Good harvests start with good soil. And if we're to continue to have plentiful harvests, we must return organic matter and fertilizer to that soil. The new fluid manure spreader provides a more effective way of applying manure, that soil building byproduct of livestock. What is meant by fluid manure? Strange as it may seem, 1,600 pounds of every ton of manure is liquid. And this part, which is generally lost, contains half of all the nitrogen in the manure and 80% of all the potash. So to get the full benefit from manure, the liquid too should be spread on the field. The tightly sealed bed of this spreader holds everything but the smell. When the spreader is not in use, a sump hole can be opened to drain off water from rain or snow. Flared side panels reduce the labor of loading and add to the capacity of the bed. The reinforced bottom is strong enough for loading from a litter carrier of any height. The fluid manure can be spread handily every day, or when necessary, the tight bed will hold all the valuable soil building fluid until the spreader is full. The fluid manure should be taken directly to the field before vital elements deteriorate. This spreader is a well-balanced machine that relieves weight on the drawbar, permitting safe operation at tractor speeds. It's easy to handle in the yard, on the road, or in the field. A close inspection shows there is no dropping or dripping from the bed. In the field, the manure is finely shredded by the beaters and the high-speed action of the widespread spiral. The beater teeth are U-shaped tapered and staggered so there are no open spaces. Distribution is accurate and even. With this machine, you can spread manure as thin as you like, because five apron speeds give you a wide choice of the amounts per acre. In a program of balanced farming, the farm herd produces cash income and is also a vital source of fertilizer for maintaining the productivity of the soil. There are many new developments in machines to harvest feed crops. Providing nutritious ensilage for the livestock is an easy one-man operation with the new ensilage harvester. There's no wrestling with heavy, dirty bundles, for the ensilage is made in the field as the crop feeds into the machine. From the time the standing crop is cut to the time it's blown into the silo, it never touches the ground. Mud, water, or destructive bacteria cannot mix with the ensilage. The finely cut, thoroughly mixed ensilage, leaves, stalks, and ears, preserves all the plant food. A deflector, controlled from the tractor seat, places the ensilage anywhere in the wagon. One man harvesting means the crop can be cut exactly at its best without waiting on anyone. The ensilage packs tightly. Why? because it's automatically, completely, and thoroughly shredded and mixed as the ensilage is made in the field. That means a solid pack. A solid pack that's free from air pockets that would produce mold. A solid pack that means more tons in each silo. When feeding the ensilage, the farmer knows that in his silo, is an extra large quantity of the most nutritious succulent feed he has ever had. When winter comes or pastures dry up, he knows that his feeding problem is whipped. Because here it is, 
Ensilage that's high in food value. Ensilage that the cattle eat completely. Ensilage that puts weight on the beef cattle or increases milk production of the dairy herd. Talking about the dairy herd, maybe your cows don't like the coarse stems of alfalfa hay. Maybe they leave them in the feed trough. We'll fix that. We'll chop those stems and mix them with leaves in the new field hay chopper. Then the cows will eat the mixture completely. This is one of the new methods of making hay. Easy, isn't it? The hay is picked up, chopped, and elevated into the wagon. It's lifted gently upward while the pickup scoots beneath it. All the leaves are taken in. Every bit of the food value is harvested with the leaves and chopped stems thoroughly mixed. An ideal feed that combines nutrition and roughage. The chopped hay occupies less space in the box and in the barn. Here the chopped dry hay is blown into the barn through the pipe that runs between the silos. A variation of this machine is a field chopper which cuts and chops green hay for grass silage. When it comes to baling hay, you can pack up your troubles with this new automatic twine baler. Gone are the baling crews, for now one man does the whole job. The baler is completely automatic. Two knotters tie the bales securely as the machine travels steadily along. One man can make as many as five bales per minute. That's baling hay. The crop can be cut when it's at its best stage, and quick handling in the field will hold the color and the leaves. Operating the machine is as simple as driving down the windrow. There are no belts, chains, or conveyors on the feeder to cause trouble. There is no winding or wrapping of hay or shattering of leaves. The pickup gently lifts the hay like a carpet and slips beneath it. The motion is so slight that all the leaves stay on, and once in the feeder, there's no getting away then. The open-end auger and packer fingers feed any kind of hay or straw positively. Making hay this way is like playing games compared to the hard work of former years. Everyone likes the uniform, rectangular sliced bales. Uniform bales are easier to transport and stack. Sliced bales are easier to feed. And here's the real test. The cows really go for that hay with its protein, minerals, and other food elements. Talk about leaves. That's what the cows would do if they could talk. Leaves on the stems mean no leavings in the trough. When it comes to picking up straw behind a combine, the baler can also handle a tremendous volume. Here is an ideal method for the farmer to save straw for his own use or to sell the surplus commercially. Say, what's that machine back there? Why, it's a one-man, self-propelled combine. Isn't that a real way to harvest wheat? That's almost as easy as going fishing. With this self-propelled job, you can go anywhere. You can open a field any place, cut the grain in any direction, and there'll be no run-down grain, no wasteful back swat. You can cut right up to the fence all the way around the field without flattening or shattering the crop. If the field has weed patches, Spots of green grain or wet places, you can cut around them. The ripe grain is saved, and the spots can be cut later. On the road, the outfit handles almost as easily as a car. The platform extends over the ditch on the right, giving wide clearance for meeting and passing. Using the road's speed, it's easy to move from one location to another. The self-propelled combine, with one-man operation, is like having an extra hand and an extra tractor at the busiest season. A tractor and driver are released for plowing, cultivating, or other seasonal work.
propel the combine and for cutting and threshing under all conditions, the heavy-duty six-cylinder engine provides steady, full power with plenty of reserve. The operator sits in an easy, natural position. He can watch all the cutting and feeding mechanism, and he has full view of the grain as he approaches it. The hydraulic lift platform gives him easy fingertip control of the cutting height. The improved grain bin is large for ample capacity. It is well located to allow clearance for trucks. And has a sloping bottom for quick and complete emptying. A pickup attachment for the self-propelled combine works well with grain cut by a windrow harvester, a binder, or a mower. Slow motion shows that even though rain has beaten the windrow into the stubble, the attachment picks it up completely. Plots or stones are passed over or flipped away. In soybeans, the self-propelled combine does a swell job. A wide range of cylinder speeds and adjustments make it possible to thresh soybeans or edible beans efficiently without cracking the beans. Where soybeans are grown, corn harvest and soybean harvest usually come along at the same time. A self-propelled combine releases the tractor for corn picking, and both crops can be harvested simultaneously, avoiding many cold, disagreeable days in the field. Here's that same combine again. Well, almost the same anyway. This is a special converted model for the rice fields. Cutting beside the ditches, rolling along in the squashy mud or the soggy fields, crossing levees squarely or rocking over them, the self-propelled combine is the modern answer to the rice growers' harvesting problem. Large, high lug tires carry the machine effectively in mud and over the levees, while the wide axle and rear wheels produce a rocking action that raises the thresher only slightly when crossing levees. A wide range of cylinder speeds and adjustments means good, clean threshing. Whether in grain, small seeds, or beans, the self-propelled machine threshes efficiently. Over all kinds of soil and ground conditions, the self-propelled harvester thresher rolls along. Here in the South, rice is a big cereal crop. But in the South, cotton is still king. Cotton, the last major crop to defy machine harvesting. For centuries, there was no improvement, no real progress in the method of harvesting cotton. It was slowly and laboriously picked by hand. The volume of cotton picked was limited by the ability of human hands, the skill of human fingers. Fingers where even the best gather cotton slowly. Cotton growers, agricultural engineers, and equipment designers have actively studied this problem for years, hoping to develop a machine that would relieve human labor of the burden of this back-breaking work. Today, that machine is a reality. With amazing speed, the McCormick Deering one-row high-drum cotton picker rapidly performs the job that would be slow, tedious work for approximately 50 people. Now, the last of the great crops of the world can be successfully and economically harvested by machines. Steel fingers inside a mechanical drum remove the cotton from the open bowls and eliminate the toil and expense of hand picking. Parallel vertical drums pass on both sides of the cotton. These rotating drums are timed with the forward speed of the machine so that the revolving spindles enter and withdraw from the plants without any raking action. And yet the tiny barbs on the spindles get the open cotton. Inside the drums, the cotton is removed from the spindles and conveyed to a separating chamber, where considerable trash is removed. It's blown past a grating that further assists in removing trash, 
and then into the basket. The basket holds approximately one half bale of seed cotton, allowing the machine to operate with few interruptions. Hydraulic lift makes dumping as easy as moving a small lever. The basket swings high over the trailer box and is completely self-cleaning. Snowballs by the basketful. The high drum pickers are mounted on farm all tractors with perfect clearance for row crops. They have two speeds to meet varying crop conditions. Every planter expects the picker to get a high percentage of the open cotton. wants a machine that is maneuverable, handles easily, and saves time on the turns. He must have a machine that does not damage the unopened bowls, or they represent additional crop to be harvested later. In plants with heavy foliage, the cotton picker also works efficiently. The leaves and the unopened poles are not injured and the cotton is cleanly removed. As soon as the cotton is ready, these marvelous machines can make quick work of harvesting. If desirable, they can be operated at night to get the cotton out of the field. The cotton is picked at its best stage before it's discolored, dirty, or strung out. These successful cotton pickers complete the mechanization of raising cotton. Now the crop can be mechanically planted, chopped, cultivated, and harvested. The cotton pickers are capable of meeting the widely varying climatic and crop conditions and the special requirements of different types of cotton. Backbreaking human toil is eliminated. Cotton can be harvested with speed and in large volume, and production costs are lowered. Cotton that has reigned for centuries as the king of fibers will still be hailed King Cotton. These are the latest in one-man harvesting machines. Machines that are your servants in making farming easier, in handling the crops by improved methods, in eliminating man-hours of work. The harvester brings you one man harvesting.